I'm willing. I like music. I'm nuts about sushi, but I will not eat tomatoes. So, do you think you know me? Well, there's more to each of us than just what you can say in a few lines. And as we get older, we learn more and more things about ourselves. Even though we're learning more things about ourselves, God already knows that stuff. And he wants us to know that too. Which brings us to the big idea. God knows who we really are, and he wants us to know that too. Let's watch this God story, and you'll see what I mean. Hi everybody, it's Jen. It's great to be back here in my favorite coffee shop and it's great to be back today with all of you. I wanna share a story today about a trip I took to Boston last year with one of my good friends. We were out shopping in the streets of Boston and I was done first so I was kind of waiting outside for her. And there was a lot of people around, no one in particular that I knew. And so when my friend came up from shopping, she started freaking out and getting really excited and I had no idea why. It turns out there was a very famous actor standing on the side of the road like hailing a cab. And I had no idea who this person was, but she was really excited. She even took some pictures and got all giggly and stuff. And I just found it really funny because I didn't know who the actor was. And honestly, I still don't even remember what his name is now. But this story reminds me of today's big idea. God knows who we really are and he wants us to know too. Today's God story is about Jacob. Do you remember Jacob? He was the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac. He tricked his dad into getting Esau's blessing. Then he ran away, he had a dream, he got married, had lots of kids, and he actually made peace with his brother. Remember that guy? That Jacob. Well, his story continues, and we're going to catch up with him and his family in Genesis 35. Let's see what happens next. God told Jacob to move to a place called Bethel and to build an altar there for God. Now an altar is a place where you could bring an offering or a sacrifice to worship God. So Jacob told everyone in his household to get ready to go. This is what he said. Come, let's go up to Bethel. There I'll build an altar to honor God. He answered me when I was in trouble. He's been with me everywhere I've gone. So God kept Jacob and his family safe as they traveled. They made it to Bethel and there they built an altar to God. So then God appeared to Jacob again and blessed him and said this, your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob anymore. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. So God made known to Jacob who he really was, not just in his new name, but in directing him as he went about his life. Jacob's name turned to Israel, which would turn into the entire nation of Israel. And that's the nation that Jesus would come from. So the story continues with God talking more to Jacob. I mean, Israel, I mean, you know who I mean. So God says that because he is the mighty God, the nation of Israel will continue to increase in numbers. Kings will come from the family and the land of Abraham and Isaac will be given to them. When God left him, Jacob, who became Israel, set up a stone pillar to show that this was a special place, a place where God spoke to him about who he really is. So back to my Boston story, as I said, my friend was super excited that this celebrity was standing on the street. You know, in hindsight, I kind of wish I knew knew who he really was because it would have been awesome to get his picture and post it on Instagram and get some likes from people being excited for me that I got to meet this person. That would have been really cool. So we can see how God reminded Jacob of who he really was and we can ask God to remind us of who we are as his well-loved kids. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time. Turn to the person next to you and discuss these questions. Oh, Willem, Willem, uh, what do I do? Get the net! Ah. Question time! God changed Jacob's name to James, Israel, Robert, or John. Israel! God changed Jacob's name because Jacob forgot his name, Jacob didn't like his name, or God knew who he really was. God knew who he really was. Jacob has set up a stone pillar to show. It was a special place where God spoke to him. He wanted to find his way back to that place, or he could build a super tall pillar. It was a special place where God spoke to him. Game time! 
groundhogs. Can you say the key verse before all the groundhogs drop? Get ready. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Say it with me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, remember him. Then he will make your paths smooth and straight. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6. I don't know if you struggle with who you are and who you're supposed to be, but we can learn from Jacob's story that God wants us to know who we really are. And once we know who we truly are, we can live our best possible lives and enjoy the gifts and talents that God has given us. We're gonna watch a story where Mariana shares on some tough times she went through and how she discovered the purpose for her life. Watch this. Hola, yo soy Mariana. My name is Mariana Monzon. I am 18 years old and I am Mexican. I guess like I've always loved to draw and write little bit stories from when I was a kid. My dad, my dad and my mom's influence was definitely there. Like they're both creative people. They're always talking about, you know, drawing and ink and whatever it is. So like they've always taught me everything I know about art. So I felt like it just became a part of me. Like I love to be creative. If, if it's not being creative, I'm doing something with my creativity or like, you know, dancing around or whatever it is. Like it's just something that fulfills me, you know, being creative. I really do, did like my life in Mexico. And then when we moved in Canada, it was very different. I felt different from everybody else. I just looked around and and as much as I tried to communicate, even even they didn't speak my language, not just in Spanish, but also just the way I am. I can't I couldn't communicate. I was just too different and I didn't I never understood why. Trying to make friends was the hardest thing, especially because everybody already knew each other from SK and JK. I kind of grew up with this group of people, but I never felt truly accepted. So in grade eight, I was very happy and I got great friends. But then I realized that they were just not like me. I decided to, instead of changing myself and becoming someone that I'm not, I'm just going to distance myself from everyone. And that was the hardest part. Because of this decision I made, I spent most of my grade eight year alone. So grade nine turned out to be a total different experience. I felt accepted, I was part of a group, and I finally felt happy to go to school again. However, three months in, I realized that my body was having some difficulties, and four days before Christmas, I found out I had cancer. But it was also one of my life-changing moments. It's where I really found God, and I really found my purpose for my life. Through it all, I have seen that God truly loves me. It has brought me to meet really inspiring people and I was able to make incredible memories that I don't think I would have had if I had been in a normal lifestyle. So I think this abnormal and extraordinary thing that has happened in my life, I don't take it for granted at all. I take it like as, I don't know, it's just, it's become so part of my life and it, I, I don't see myself ever not having gone through it. It just, it would have been, I would have been a total different person. I wouldn't have been the person I am today. <laughs> Wow, what can you say after a video like that? Mariana found herself in God after going through some of the worst things that you can think of, but God showed her who she really was, and now she can encourage and inspire others. 
Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our lives. 